Hello again, folks. Mike McDonald here from Mayday Flight Tutoring with yet another E6B video in the series, number five. What the heck are the windows on the front of the E6B? What are they for? How do you use them? I get this question a lot from students when they look at this seemingly complicated looking device. And uh, I'm always happy to show them that they, these windows are very useful and actually quite simple to use. Um, I'm using the University of North Dakota Aerospace Division uh, Digital E6B, and it was created by Jared Thompson. And I'll put a link under the description so you can go to that yourself and uh, enjoy using enjoy using that yourself. So let's just get right to it. Let's talk first of all about the neutral uh, calibration of the E6B and how that relates to density altitude and true altitude calculations. You will see that the E6B is set right now with the black 10 on the black 10. And you can see that the triangle with 60 is opposite 60. So that means that the E6B is in its default position. Um, I like to liken it to the, to what is a default position? Well, it's what we call a standard situation. You've heard the term standard pressure, standard temperature, standard atmosphere. Well, these are all examples of what I like to call the king's foot. The foot of the king that is used to create a measuring stick from which all measurements are made, the foot, all right? So standard temperature, standard pressure, um, and, uh, and sea level are, create what we call standard atmosphere. What is standard atmosphere? It's plus 15 degrees Celsius at zero feet mean sea level with an air pressure of 29.92 inches mercury, also at mean sea level. All right, and that can be reflected in the E6B if you just simply look at the right-hand window, which is our density altitude slash air correction, airspeed correction window. You'll see what I mean. Notice that when the E6B is in its default position, the density altitude reads zero feet, sea level. You will also see that at zero feet on your pressure altitude, because 2992 is standard pressure, and if we are in a standard atmosphere, we're having 2992 as our altimeter setting, so our pressure altitude would read exactly the same as our altim altimeter indication. So zero feet, and pressure altitude is sitting directly across 15 degrees, plus 15 degrees Celsius. So standard atmosphere is set when the E6B is set to its standard setting, all right? So what exactly do these windows do on the right-hand side? Well, they do two things, basically. Uh, the one window very simply just gives you what the density altitude is. What is density altitude? It's the altitude that the airplane thinks it's flying in not necessarily what you see on the air, or the altitude, the altimeter, the altitude that the airplane feels like it's flying in, all right? Because we're set to standard, everything is standardized here or right now, all right? This window is where you set your pressure altitude opposite the temperature. Why? Because we want to work out a calculation, all right? You can see right here, it says airspeed correction. Set pressure altitude opposite the outside air temperature in the window. Opposite of the calibrated airspeed on the inner dial, read the true airspeed on the outer. Okay, wait a minute. Calibrated airspeed? Uh, have you looked in your performance section of your pilot operating handbook? If you have, you'll see a little table that converts between calibrated and indicated airspeed. Why does it need to do that? Because there are errors that are introduced to the airspeed indication system through the position of the pitot tube under the wing and how it relates to the flap settings. In other words, is as you change the flap settings on, uh, on the wing, it affects the airflow around the pitot tube. And that pitot tube will then give slightly inaccurate measurements to your airspeed indicator, all right? So in actual fact, the airspeed indicator is slightly in error compared to calibrated airspeed, all right? Which is taking into account the shape of the wing, the airflow around the wing, and the flap setting, okay? So for the purposes of what we're doing, calibrated airspeed is perfectly fine to use. You'll notice that usually you only have one, one to two knots difference between calibrated and indicated airspeed, depending on your flap setting. So for the purposes of what we're doing, a knot or two doesn't make too much difference. So why don't we just get right to it? What we'll do is we'll set up on the board here a little uh, problem. What is the information we need to determine what the true airspeed is? All right, well, we need to know what our 
um, altitude is that we're flying at. And we, and of course, we're going to use our indicated altitude for that. So let's say, for example, that we're flying at 10,000 feet indicated on your altimeter. Okay. We need to know the temperature outside of the aircraft. Let's say, for example, it's a fairly warm day up at 10,000 feet, quite warm day at 10,000 feet of 10 degrees Celsius. So we'll put plus 10 degrees Celsius. All right, so we're filling in some of the information we need to use this true airspeed calculator, density altitude calculator. The other thing we need to know in order to determine a pressure altitude is what the altimeter setting is or the air pressure in the air that we're flying in at the moment. Come, which would come from the nearest reporting station or from, from the forecast, if you're doing it in advance, this calculation in advance, from the forecast pressure. You can get the forecast pressure from the GFA in Canada in millibars converted to inches mercury. Let's just say, for example, it is 29.22 inches mercury. So that's your altimeter setting. So now we have our indicated altitude, we have our temperature and we have the air pressure. Now we need to know, well, what speed are we flying at? What is our indicated airspeed so that we can convert it to true airspeed? Well, that's simple enough. Say we're flying your standard 90 knots in a Cessna 172 or a PA 140. All right. So with this information, we can do the calculation. But now we need to determine what the pressure altitude is. Pressure altitude. All right. There's two ways to do that. One is to just simply take your uh, altimeter and set the window to 29.92. In other words, standardize it. Whatever it reads is your pressure altitude. If you don't want to do that, or if you're not in the air yet, you can use this equation. Take the 29.92 standard pressure and subtract whatever your altimeter setting is. In this case, 29.22. So minus 29.22. You will see that that gives you a positive number of 0.7. 0.7. Oops. So then we'll multiply that by 1000 equals 700. Okay, that's our corrective factor that we need to add to the indicated altitude. Okay. If it's a negative number, we subtract it from the indicated altitude. If it's a positive number, like in this case, we will add it to the indicated altitude. So that means that our new indicated altitude is, or our, our pressure altitude, it's not indicated, is 10,000. 700 feet, all right, P out, all right? We need that, and that's how we did that calculation, so we can put it in the window opposite the temperature. So 10,700 feet. So I'll just uh, move this around a little bit until you can see the 10,000. So there you can see 10,000, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 10,700 would be roughly three quarters of the way, two thirds of the way past 10. And we need to set that against that plus 10 degrees Celsius. So to the left of the zero are the pluses. So there's plus 10 degrees. So if we can set that plus 10 degrees, roughly two thirds of the way between 10 and 11, there you go. We have now calibrated our, or set our E6B based on pressure altitude and temperature. And the pressure altitude is a function of air pressure, okay? So now all we have to do is follow the instructions. As it said, now we know about the calibrated altitude. In this case, is basically our indicated, or sorry, calibrated airspeed is basically our indicated airspeed. So if we're indicating 90 knots, here's we find our 90 knots on the inner window, and you can see that it's 105, 6, 7, 8, 109 knots is our true airspeed. That's considerably faster, 19 knots faster than uh, our indicated airspeed. And it's a function. It's all a function of that low air pressure, fairly high temperature for that altitude, okay? So the aircraft feels, well, it's actually flying really in, in true airspeed, 109 knots, okay? Even though you're indicating 90 knots, as you can imagine, as that temperature dropped or that pressure rose or a combination of the two, then your indicated airspeed would get closer and closer to your true airspeed. So the thicker the air, right? The closer your true airspeed is to your indicated airspeed, all right? And again, just looking at the density altitude window, if you were asked a question, what is the density altitude under these conditions? You just simply read it out of the window 
and you can see it's roughly 12 and a half thousand feet. So that's the altitude that the aircraft feels like it's flying in, density altitude, okay? So that's a high density altitude day. So that's basically it for the right-hand side of the window, fairly straightforward. Now we'll work on the left-hand side of the E6B and we'll do uh, altitude corrections. All right, here we are with the altitude corrections window. Again, I'm just gonna standardize the E6B. So I'm gonna put the one on the one, the six on the six. And you'll see again that based on standard atmosphere that you can see that zero feet pressure altitude equals plus 15 degrees Celsius. So you know that this is set to the king's foot or standard atmosphere, all right? So we're gonna deviate from that based on the conditions of flight. Now, in the earlier video, I did do true, uh, uh, true altitude calculations with an E6B, but I didn't have this digital E6B to use. Um, but what I did do in that video was I demonstrated the effects of temperature on columns of air, all right? And you might wanna refer back to that video and have a look at that little demonstration and you'll see that, that uh, cold air temperatures affect your uh, height in terms of true altitude, you're lower, all right? And higher air temperatures will actually put you higher in true altitude than may be indicated on your altimeter. And I'll show that to you right now. So let's just set up another scenario. Uh, let's imagine that we are, oh, let's say at 10,000 feet, again, indicated. And let's say that it is, uh, a fairly cold day at 10,000 feet, minus 40 degrees Celsius, all right? And, uh, and uh, let's just say that it's a really low pressure day too. So 2992 being the standard, um, we'll make it 2900. So 29.00 inches mercury, an extreme example, but I wanna show you how this works. Is there altimeter setting for the nearest reporting station or the expected altimeter setting on the day? Okay, so we have our indicated altitude, we have the temperature, and we have the altimeter setting. All right, so now we need to do that, that pressure altitude calculation because it says you need to set the pressure altitude opposite the temperature. So 29.92, which is the standard, minus 29.00, all right? So it's gonna leave you e equals 0.92 times 1,000. Oops, I'm having a rough time here, 1,000, all right? So that's equals 920 feet of correction, which we need to add to our indicated altitude. So our pressure altitude equals 10,920, or for all intents and purposes, let's just call it 11,000 feet, it's close enough. Okay, so we'll just call it 11,000 feet. So now we go to the left-hand side of our WSVL E6B, and I'll just move it over here a little bit so you can see. It says, set pressure altitude opposite the outside air temperature Celsius in the window, opposite of calibrated altitude or indicated altitude, on the inner circle, you will read the true altitude on the outer scale. Okay, let's give that a try. So we've got 11,000 feet. Well, here we can see it goes in multiples of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12,000 feet. So 11,000 feet is halfway between, and we need to set that against minus 40 degrees Celsius. So there we go. 11,000 feet is opposite minus 40 degrees Celsius. So now we'll follow the instructions. If our indicated or calibrated is 10,000 feet, here it is here. Now remember the E6B works in multiples of tens. This could mean 1, 0.1, 10, 100, 1,000, you get the picture. So this 10,000 feet on the inner indicates something considerably less than 9,000 feet on the outer. It's actually 8,500, 8,600, 8,750. 8,750 from 10,000 feet, all right? So that's 1,250 feet lower than what you're indicated. So imagine that you wanted to clear a mountain by 500 feet, all right? If in actual fact at 10,000 indicated, we're at uh, 8,750, 8, 
all right? So it indicates 10,000, true altitude is 8,750. All right, what if you had to clear a 9,000 foot obstacle? Could you do it? If that, if that is a hard and fast 9,000 above sea level obstacle, you think you're doing fine. You think you got a thousand feet clearance because you're indicating 10, but after doing the true altitude calculation, you realize that you're actually only at 8,750 true altitude, which means that you are going to impact the obstacle. So do you see why it's important to do true altitude calculations? All right. This is also the reason why that uh, the heavy metal above 18,000 feet all fly at the same pressure level. So they'll all switch the altimeters to 2992. So they ride the pressure levels and consequently they ride the temperature levels all together. So even though they may be indicating a constant altitude, they're rising and following, falling with pressure and temperature deviations from one partial air of air into the next, but they're all doing it in concert together. So that's the uh, flying the standard pressure region above 18,000 feet. But at any rate, now you can see why you need to do that because of the simple fact that in very cold temperatures, in very cold temperatures, you are definitely not going to be flying the indicated altitude that you thought you were. So that's basically it uh, for the Windows side of the E6B. Um, as you can see, it's fairly straightforward and is not as difficult as one might think uh, and very handy. The great thing about the E6B is that you can carry this in your lap, all right? So if you're with an examiner on a flight test and the examiner says, after you say you're, you're doing your nav portion and you're flying along, you're doing a ground speed check and the examiner looks over and says, great, can you tell me what our true airspeed is in flight right now? Well, you can use the E6B on your knee to do that because you'll have the altimeter setting, the outside air temperature, and you have an indicated altitude, which you can convert to pressure altitude, all right? Also, with this side of the E6B, you can work backwards. Say, for example, that you use your pilot operating handbook and performance charts to figure out that you're going to fly at 110 true airspeed at a particular altitude, and you'd like to know what that would indicate. So you can just run the calculation backwards, set up the conditions in your windows, then start on the outside. All right, 110 becomes X. All right, that's how that works. Also of note, you'll find that some airspeed indicators have a tiny whiz wheel built into them, and it shows pressure altitude and temperature. So as you turn the airspeed indicator outer ring, it's basically doing the E6B work to give you your true altitude or vice versa. On the left-hand side, your, uh, did I say true altitude? True airspeed and vice versa. On the left-hand side, all right, now we're dealing with altitude correction. Um, obviously, if you have low air pressure and low temperatures, what's going to happen is, is that the molecules in that column of air get compressed down and the molecule spread that would make the airspeed, the altimeter indicate 10,000 feet might actually be lower than say standard atmosphere or above standard temperature, atmosphere or pressure, all right? So yeah, it's very important to know what your true altitude is, especially in mountain flying, all right? When you want to clear obstacles in these little pistons that we fly around. So there you go, that's the E6B uh, video number five, dealing with the density altitude, two airspeed, indicated airspeed uh, conversions, and uh, the true altitude, altitude correcting uh, functions. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it made sense to you. Um, and by all means, if you like this video, please hit the like button and feel free to subscribe. And I look forward to bringing you yet another video from Mayday Flight Tutoring. And until then, I'll catch you on the ramp. All the best.